I'm Sue Patterson, Director of Marketing and Events at the City Market. Welcome to the Weekly Report. As Kansas City gradually reopens, we want you to know that our restaurants, retail shops, produce stands, and specialty grocers are all open daily at City Market. Hours and services are listed on our website at thecitymarket.org. When you shop at City Market, you're supporting small, locally owned businesses and our local economy. With regard to the recent protests and social justice issues that our nation and city are confronting, supporting black business owners is a great way to uplift our community. Here are small, family owned businesses you can support at City Market. Africa 2000 specializes in African apparel and accessories. Blue Nile Cafe serves authentic and delicious Ethiopian cuisine. And Crossland International Market is every home chef's dream, featuring imported goods from Africa, Central and South America, and the Caribbean. And you'll be happy to know the Farmer's Market is in full swing on Saturdays and Sundays year-round, by the way, with vendors of every type selling locally grown veggies, cut flowers, gardening plants, delicious prepared foods, arts and crafts, and so much more. Look for our visitor guidelines and follow our social distancing signage to help keep City Market welcoming and comfortable for everyone. Be sure to subscribe to City Market News, our weekly e-newsletter that's filled with what's in season, event information, recipes, and much more. Our email list is private and you can subscribe on our website at thecitymarket.org. It's more important than ever to support local farmers and small business to keep our community and local economy strong. It's also important to note that our mission is to provide access to fresh, healthy food. Many people are struggling to make ends meet in this current economic climate and may qualify for benefits through the USDA Supplemental Nutrition Assistance Program, also known as SNAP. Several city market specialty grocers, produce stands, and farmers market vendors accept SNAP benefits. Our farmers market participates in the Double Up Food Bucks matching program and matches SNAP benefits dollar for dollar up to $15 to spend on fresh produce during the farmers market per day. These programs are a great way for anyone who qualifies to stretch their food budget to include lots of fresh healthy fruits and veggies. You can get more information about SNAP and Double Up Food Bucks on our website or visit our SNAP booth during the farmers market. Have you seen our newest addition? It's a great place to take a selfie along with the Kansas City skyline. It's all part of the newly renovated Walnut Street, which is now a two-way thoroughfare through City Market and connects 3rd Street and 5th Street. It also increases the visibility of our shops and restaurants, as well as makes the market so much easier to drive and safer to walk through. It's the result of a partnership between City Market, Public Works, City Planning, and Port KC. In addition to our new monument sign on 3rd Street, there's new public seating, on-street parking, and a roomy new pedestrian plaza. We still have free two-hour daily parking along the pavilions, and as always, Walnut closes to vehicular traffic during the farmer's market. Oh, and be sure you use the hashtag CityMarketSelfie when you post your photo. And speaking of new additions, be on the lookout for a new sculpture installation thanks to our location partnership with Art in the Loop. Kansas City artist Will Vanerson will be unveiling it soon and you'll want to take a selfie with it too. Thanks for watching the Weekly Report. I'm City Market Sue. Stay tuned for more great city videos. Hello, my name is Glenn North and I'm the Executive Director of the Bruce R. Watkins Cultural Heritage Center located at 3700 Blue Parkway. I would like to invite everyone out this Thursday, June the 18th at 6 p.m. for a community engagement session regarding whether or not the J.C. Nichols name should be removed from the fountain in Mill Park and from the parkway that runs along Brush Creek. We are doing everything in our power to keep everyone safe. We've got our chairs spaced so that no one is in too close of a contact with each other. We are marking the floors so that we can make sure that everyone is maintaining the six foot social distancing. And we just ask that you bring your masks and your ideas. We look forward to seeing you. Once again, our address is 3700 Blue Park. Hi everyone, I'm 
Chris Hernandez with City Communications. We are outside City Hall on the South Steps, a place that has always been for the people to lift up their voices and for our city officials to listen. My role as a congressperson is to listen. I share the heartbreak and outrage over the killing of George Floyd, Breonna Taylor, Ahmaud Arbery, and the countless other folks who have, black people who have been killed, and that we need to listen. Non-black people need to listen. Yeah. Elected people need to listen. Y'all yeah. need to check people's resumes. Y'all gonna have a lot of people coming before y'all talking, a lot of people saying that they're listening, a lot of people saying that they're caring. It is the same with some that's protesting. Some that's protesting don't actually care about the struggle, but the struggle is real. And y'all need to start checking people's resumes, especially those that are in office. What are we gonna do for all of these children so that they don't have to grow up in the world that we have grown up in? We keep hearing that they're good cops and they're bad cops, but we can't have any bad cops. Will you be protesting in the corporate corners? at negotiation tables? Where will your protest be in the hallways of the classroom or in the chambers of the legislative house? How will you sustain your protest? Are you thinking of a master plan? This is about the persistence of systemic needs on the necks of black lives. Today is not about us. Today is not about indigenous lives. Today is not about brown lives. Today is not about Latinx lives. Today, it's about black lives. You know, it's, it's a difficult thing to talk about. And especially when I think back of my history textbooks, at least the ones that I saw when I was a kid, they were whitewashed. And we were led to believe that because the North won the Civil War and slavery was in our distant past, that we'd been atoned. And that ain't right. And one of the first one of the first memories I have of an uprising in regards and result the result of of a brutal beating of Rodney King, I didn't understand that that protest was about not just about the beating, but the fact that those officers who brutally beat him were absolved of all wrongdoing. Kansas City is one of the only cities in the country where the demonstrations have led to actual policy change. The proposed funding for body cameras, we demand a restrictive policy governing the use of force, including multi-step de-escalation procedure. We demand that the KCPD demilitarize. We demand that KCPD engage with community representatives and that they continue to serve the people of Kansas City. But people, we are not done. We've won the day, but the battle has just begun. We changed policies that hadn't been changed for years. We made it so that any use of force violation needs to be reviewed by an outside agency, not a department itself. We changed it, so any, and I mean any, officer involved shooting needs to be investigated by an outside agency, not just a department. And our city leaders want you to keep engaging with us. Follow the city council meetings every Wednesday and Thursday. Watch Channel 2. Go to kcmo.gov, the city website, or follow us on social media. We are here to listen and then act. I'm Chris Hernandez with City Communication. We came out this morning and, um, and there was quite a bit of graffiti in the park. And it's very obvious that people are in pain, that people want to find a way to express themselves. And, and um, so we came up with this idea, like, let's give them a forum for that and um, so we're putting up some sections of what we're going to call expression walls. Um, our staff is working on that now. These will all be painted white. And uh, with, the, with the express yourself uh, notation on the top to try and get people more involved and to give them a good legitimate place to pour their heart out and yet not, not do damage to the stone walls or the fountain. I will say, you know, other than the graffiti, of course there's a lot of trash when you have that, but the community has been phenomenal to volunteer and pick that all up. Um, by the time I got here at seven this morning, it was already clean. Well, I like it, um, freedom of expression, give your valid opinions and thoughts of how you feel on this current situation. That's, That's awesome. a great idea. 
It'll keep people from graffitiing on the walls, and we don't want that. You think parks are the place that people come to express themselves, to unite, um, to get some fresh air, um, to be with other people, safely social distancing, we hope. Um, so, so we're glad that we're, we have that platform. Uh, we would just ask people to be respectful of, um, of the system and make sure that um, we don't destroy anything. Bring your, bring your thoughts and your ideas and, uh, and let's continue to take care of our parks. to Lakeside. Uh, this here is Lily and Lily would like to invite everyone to come and join us Tuesday June 16th we're reopening to the public. Um, a few things we'd like to encourage please wear masks and um, they are safe for you they're safe for us and they're safe for these little critters too. So we'll be open 9 till 4 and uh, we'll have a one-way path for everyone to come in and enjoy our exhibits and uh, we can't wait to see you all. Please come and join us. Have a great day. My name is Robert Woods. I'm with Neighborhoods, and I'm here with an Earth Day everyday tip to keep your neighborhoods clean. Everyone knows litter is unsightly, but the harmful effects of trash on neighborhoods are more than just visual. It can cause physical injury. Items like broken glass, needles, rusty metal left on the ground can easily cut someone. Lit cigarettes flicked out of car windows can spark fires, causing property damage or injure people. It can make you sick. Littering can encourage the spread of pests and diseases. Trash on the ground and especially large dump sites provide places for rats and other vermin to live. Illegally dumped tires and plastic bottles can hold rainwater, allowing mosquitoes to breathe. It pollutes the environment and harms wildlife. Litter and trash along the road often gets washed into creeks and streams during rain events, carrying toxins to water and down into the soil. Fish, birds, and small animals sometimes confuse trash for food or get tangled in it, leading to health problems or death. But Kansas City offers lots of options to keep your neighborhoods clean. The Blue Bag Program provides trash bags at no cost to neighborhood groups civic organizations, and residents for litter control in the public right away. Blue bags can be used for cleanups, but cannot be used for personal use. After your cleanup, call the city's 311 call center to schedule a pickup for the bags. If you are planning a neighborhood cleanup event and your neighborhood is registered with the city, your neighborhood may be able to obtain dumpsters at a reduced cost. Funding for the dumpsters is limited and dumpsters are available on a first come first serve basis. Trying to get rid of dump tires? Tires are not collected with the residential trash, so the city offers a separate waste tire drop-off program. Tire drop-off is available to all KCMO residents at the city's environmental campus, 4707 Doramus, on the first Saturday of each month from March through November. Operating hours from 9 a.m. to 5 p.m. and personal tires can be dropped for a small fee. A neighborhood group can drop off tires from cleanups at no charge with prior approval from the Solid Waste Department. If you would like to learn more about how to make Earth Day every day, go to our website kcmo.gov slash earthday.
those that keep us moving, I just want to say thank you. Thank you for, for getting our first responders. Thank you for getting our frontline workers. Thank you for keeping this city moving and breathing. Can I take your temperature today? Thanks for your commitment. Thanks for your courage. You ready. <laughs> and thanks for connecting people to opportunities, which is the mission statement of Right Casey. It's about everybody in the agency. It's about us all working together as one team, as one agency, for one city. And we appreciate and want to say thank you to everybody within this agency for all the work they do. Because whether you're operating a bus, cleaning a bus, fixing one of our vehicles, or working in an HR department, your value is strong, not only with this agency, but with this city. Thank you. I'm Donna Mays, Kansas City, Missouri Fire Chief, and I just want to thank the Kansas City residents for supporting the Fire Sales Tax Initiative. It will help us replace an aging ambulance fleet. Many of our ambulances have more than 190,000 miles. Because our EMS call volume has increased 20% over the last three years, this tax allows us to keep up with that demand. One of the things we'll be able to do is replace our 12 lead EKG monitors. One of the most important components of our operation is being able to dispatch ambulances and fire trucks to EMS calls for service. This fire sales tax will allow us to make important upgrades to the dispatch consoles in our communication center. So I just want to say thank you Kansas City for passing the fire sales tax. This tax will allow us to continue to provide the professional service that you've come to depend on for the past 150 years. out a lot of the understory growth and some of the trees that are uh, severely storm damaged or need to come out that have uh, been dead for several years so just trying to get recover some of this area trying to restore it all the way back how it used to be. For Blitzes is a chance to get a chance with get with other districts and you know work as a team as a whole unit so most of the time we don't get a chance to work as a unit unless we got an emergency or something like that. doing a blitz on Dunn Park and basically replacing these tabletops, uh, putting new lumber on it. It's always good when we get all our guys together. It's a beautiful thing. Um, we all come together for one good. That's to clean up the park. Um, I'm sure the neighborhood's going to be uh, uh, really excited about the stuff getting cleaned up. 